Beep, beep. What's up, ninjas? My name is Samuel. Today, I'm going to teach you guys how to make your very own dark progressive house leads. We're going to talk a little bit about the theory behind it and how then you guys can take it to make your own leads, you know, own unique leads if you can do that. And then um, I'll teach you a little bit about the layers you're going to add and all that. Now, July 28, we have Main Stage Revolution coming out if you want to help support this channel. These are packs I release to help you guys make the music you love. Now, I do recommend that if you are buying the pack, make sure that it's only because you want to make that style of music because i think the pack while it's good for other style of big room we made it specifically for main stage style music so the presets are gonna contain trans influences as well as very dubstep like fills sequence fills for those type of songs that as you guys know a lot of main stage um artists tend to use or hard style if you want to say that all right guys so we're going to start right off the bat. We're going to input a MIDI from the main stage pack. All right. So the first thing is right off the bat, we have the retrig on. And we want to leave the retrig on whenever we're working on the driven lead of Dark Progressive House lead. You're going to have a middle lead and you're going to have a stereo lead at times. Now, the mono lead is usually going to be very driven. You don't like to put driven stuff on the sides of the mix. And the way we're going to be doing this is, you know, you can increase the voice to as many as you want. This is going to be an increase in volume. Um, you'll see it starts to change once we start to add other stuff. Now, amp envelope A is going to stay the same. The other things you can do here is change the wavetable, as I'll show you in the future once we have programmed the sound. Now, we're going to be utilizing a bandpass filter. And the bandpass is my favorite one because in combination with the distortion, it creates really deadly kind of um, combinations. You get different tonalities. You can, um, you know, just get different type of sounds out of one sound using the bandpass and the cutoff. So, for instance, let's put in a distortion with an overdrive and use the bandpass. Let's move this over here. Now, with high res resonance as well. You can see those kind of variations. Now, let's say you want the sound to be a little bit more fuller. Then you're going to switch to 12 dB, which is going to let out more frequencies. It's not as strict as 24 dB. The higher the number when it comes to filters, the more strict it is. The more it's going to let, let, let out. Think of it like a strict mom. No, you're not going to your friend's birthday party. And then to a, a more chill mom, like, yeah, sure. Just make sure to call us at this time and, and all that. And that's the type of parent I'm going to be. But anyways, you know, enough of that. Now, other things we can do is we can also add a sine wave if we want. Or some white noise if you want, like just one voice and lower the volume really low. Alright, and then we can mess with the distortion. We can choose different types like full back, you know, that's a good one. It's going to give us different, let's get rid of the white noise, I'm not a fan of it. We're going to add it on the second layer. No, no, fuck that's some bit crazy. So we're going to go with this. Now, let's say you want to mix this sound up. You want to make it more of your own. Then you can, you know, switch the wavetable. You know, here, like, let's say a half, you know, quarter pull. And we also have a tri saw. You can do it slightly because then if you overdo it, it's just going to mess up with the bit crush. And, you know, the bit crush is cool, but the overdrive, I think, is a better one, a more safe type of distortion. Now, we're going to add a bit of punch to this by adding pitch A and B, slightly to the right, fast decay time here. Now, let's lower this down. I just want a little bit of a punch there, and we're also going to add that to pitch A and B to add a little bit of dirt. You can also add it to the cutoff AB at a very fast rate. It depends on you. There's various strategies with that. Let's add a high rate and very little gain. You're going to control how much with this gain knob here. Once we're done there, let's EQ. And let's add a bit of body with this bass, not too much. Before and after. And now reverb. Now, we're going to activate Mono Legato, and we have N mode and S mode. Now, N mode is going to allow you to do it a slides as long as you have two MIDI notes inputted at the same time or you're holding them down. Let's make it more apparent. But when you do it individually, it doesn't do the legato effect. Now, in S mode, it's going to do it no matter what. You know, it doesn't, you know, it, it's kind of like that. And it's cool to have for certain types of sound. You know, um, but then the end mode is a little bit more practical. So 
So that's going to be the first layer. Now we're going to duplicate silence one. We're going to initialize it. Now we're going to make the second layer, which is going to be the stereo layer. Now the stereo layer is going to be a saw as well. Usually, you know, you're going to have a lot of saws. Retrick is going to be off on this one. Now, I didn't explain what Retrick does, but Retrick is going to allow this phase to go back to zero every time you play a new note. If you have the Retrick off, it's just going to keep going. 360 degrees as a full, you know, the wave table has gone through its whole phase, and then, you know, it repeats again. While in zero, it's the beginning, and Retrick is just going to go to the beginning phase. So with the phase, you're going to select the starting point of your wave table, and if you have the Retrick on, it's always going to go back to that position, which gives you a lot punchier sounds, but that doesn't sound that good when you're detuning. Sounds really whack. So we're going to get rid of it. So now it's there. We're going to add a bit of relief. And then we're going to add another saw here. And we're going to use a hand pass, a high pass, sorry, hand pass, to fucking, uh, you know, EQ out the lows on this. Now in part B, we're going to add white noise, and this is going to help in, you know, layering the sound up a bit more. This is where we can do it because we're not going to apply any distortion. Usually if you have a lot of voices and you distort, it doesn't sound as pleasing because then the distortion just doubles every single voice you have. And it's just, I'm, I've never been a big fan of it. Is that a high pass to it? And a drive? Okay, we're gonna add an EQ. We don't want any body, so let's lower this down. And then reverb. There we go, we have that. And then we can do the same effects to this as we did to the other lead, make sure it's in mono as well. Okay. And then we're going to add that pitch A and B if you want. Um, reverse maybe a little bit to let that. Opposite way so that it lets it out. And now when you play it together, you just level it off. Like you, you use the levels to kind of have it. You're going to have the stereo layer a little bit less than the mono. Now, if you want to get more unique with this, again, change the wavetables. You can mess with the different types of distortions we're using. But this is generally how you're going to create those type of leads. Let's say you just want a simple size lead with a low pass. And you can also do that. You know, and you can just switch it out and, and get good, good leads. And then you can process them using the last video I made on how to process or mix fat leads. Anyways, then just hopefully you liked this video. I wanted to make it really fast for you guys today, even though I'm really busy finishing up the main stage pack. It's done. Um, you know, there's still things I want to fine tune in it. And I'm going to be sending this out to a lot of the main stage artists, as you guys know. Um, I've interviewed some of them. So if you guys want to see those interviews, I'll make sure to leave it at the end of this video in the outro. And I'll see you guys next time. Then just take care. And you guys have an amazing day. As always, keep making the music you love. And just keep moving forward and becoming a better producer every day.